Hello, I'm Richard Lobb, the principal developer of the Moodle Code Runner question type. In this third video on the subject of question authoring, I want to introduce you to the very important idea of defining your own question types. This is an invaluable skill if you're doing much in the way of Code Runner development. It turns out to be quite easy to do. You customize a question. We showed how to do that in the last video. You open the advanced customization panel in the authoring form. You save the question as a prototype. A prototype is a special code runner question that actually defines a question type rather than a specific question. You must make sure that you give it a name that makes clear that this is a prototype. You should ideally have a special category for question prototypes, but we won't worry about that in this example. So let's go and look at the example from the last video, which was this one here, rewrite using a while loop. If I open that, just to remind you, the question looked like this. It said, drag it down a bit, it said, uh, asks the student to rewrite that piece of code using a while loop rather than a for loop. And we have to make sure that the student doesn't simply paste that code in and get marked correct. We have to make sure they get an error message. In this case, error, you cannot use for loops. And the way in which we did that was a little bit hacky, to be honest, and I said that at the time. That's this code here. Sorry, I'll look at this example on this tab, which is if the word for appears anywhere in the student answer, then we bomb their submission. This is the edited template. That's not very pretty. The student might, for example, have written a perfectly correct answer, but put a comment at the top translating from for to while. Because the word for appears in their comment, we'd throw them out. Not good. The way to do it properly is this one here, which I won't go through in great detail, but it uses the Python AST, Abstract Syntax Tree module, and it uses that to parse the student answer. And what we get out of that is a parse tree. We traverse the parse tree using a special node visitor class that we've got here, which has a method that's called every time a four node is encountered. If we encounter any four nodes, we bomb the submission. That's clean and correct. And I'm going to use this version, mainly because I can't live with the other one. I'm going to use that to create a new question type. Why might I want a new question type? Well, if I've only got one of these questions like this, that's fine. But if I've got multiple ones, then I've got a bit of a maintenance disaster. I'd have to repeat the template code in every one. And then if I wanted to change anything, like the error message, for example, I'd have to go back, find every single occurrence, and edit them manually. Not good. So I'm going to make a new question type. I'm going to start by duplicating the working question. That's the one we were just looking at here. So I duplicate that. and. It's customized, of course. I'm going to scroll down to the advanced customization section, which is closed. I'm going to open that, and I'm going to change this drop down to yes, user defined. I now have, potentially have, a new question type. I have to say what the type is going to be, and I'm going to call it Python 3 for to while. I should save it with a suitable name. This is the name it will appear with in the question bank. It's not the type, it's the name of the question. And I'm going to write it like prototype Python 3 for to while. This is just my convention. You can give it any name you like. But this is the one I strongly encourage. The question text is now not sensible as text for a question. It becomes the documentation. So this is a new question type that requires the student answer to not use any for loops. That's not very well written. This documentation is available to people who use your question type. I'll try to remember to show you that in a minute. I have to delete the answer. Well, I don't have to, but I'm going to. It makes no sense to have one. And I should delete the test cases as well. They make no sense either. This is a question type, not a question. So I save it. What I now have in my question bank is this new prototype Python 3 for to while. If I create a new code runner question at this point, code runner here, and add it, something rather special has happened. If I look at this drop down here, I discover a new question type Python 3 for to while. It wasn't there before. It's there because in the current context, I have a prototype for this question type. So if I choose that, 
then if I look in the question type details, a new question type that requires the student answer to not use any for loops. There's the documentation I just entered into my prototype. And uh, this has been filled out automatically by Moodle. A draft version of this text was automatically recorded, restored. Uh, that would normally not happen to you. You'd have an empty question text here, and I'd have to start all over and fill out the question as though this is a brand new question. I'm not going to do that because that's a trifle tedious. I'm going to back out of that, and I'm going to do something slightly trickier. I'm going to edit the existing question, which I already have, and I'm going to change its type to Python 3 for a while. This is potentially dangerous. You better know what you're doing if you do this sort of trick. It does warn you, changing question type, and it gives me the option of clicking OK to reload all those customization fields. In other words, to throw my existing customization out, which is what I want in this case, but do be careful when you do this. OK, I've now got this question which is not customized anymore. It has the same question text as it had before, it's got the same answer, it's got the same test cases. It's all the same as before, but it's not customized. And so I can save that, and it behaves now exactly as it did before, except, as I say, it's not customized. It's using the template from that prototype rather than having its own. So I can now have as many of these as I like, and I've only got the one copy of the template to edit if something goes wrong. And that's pretty much all there is to this game. Except for the warnings, the big caveats. Questions of your new type need the prototype somewhere in their context. So this question now, this new edited modified version, depends on that for its template. If that's not there, I've got a broken question. I get a horrible big red error message warning me that the prototype's not there. What am I going to do? So there's no control over this within the uh, Moodle system. There's no way of enforcing the dependency of this question on this question. So it's over to you as a question author to be very disciplined and make sure that you never lose your prototypes. If you delete that, you broke all of those. So that's the big warning, and associated with that is that if you export any of your questions, say for a different course, you must make sure that you export the prototype as well, or the questions won't be of any use. So to summarize, it's very easy to create your own question types. You just save, customize a question, save it as a prototype, and make clear when you name it that it's a prototype, and then you're in business. But you must be very careful to make sure that you don't delete your prototypes, and they're always available for use by the children, if you think of it that way. And that applies also if you export them. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Bye.